Hey everyone, Courant here, welcoming you back to Suikoden 5. In the last episode, we made our way here to the Ashtwal Ruins, chasing down Marskal Godwin and the Sun Rune. We went through the ruins. That's pretty much all we did. Lots of snow, lots of ice, lots of different teams, and going back and forth with those different teams and the like. We haven't quite gotten to the main events just yet. We're going to in this episode, though. Well, at least in this dungeon proper. Because we did most of the tracking around before we get to the big boss fights last time. So we're going to do the big boss fights this time. What we got to do, head up the elevator and go ahead and track this way. Make our way turn to the west and find ourselves another item once we get down to the bottom here. Alright, so let's see. Once we go down, yeah, that's weird. I don't know why it didn't go down immediately when we hit that switch area. Once we go down here, we pick up the Sun Gloves, which, just like the other Sun stuff, make sure to give to the Prince, which we will give to him when we get back to him. Once we make our way back, all we really have to do is, well, retake this so we can go back down. And then head north, and we come to, well, a switch that'll open things up. For the prince, incidentally. Alright, so that's it for you for now. Okay, so now as we take control of the prince again, let's go ahead and go into inventory and let's start equipping that sun stuff because we very much need to. Alright, let's see. Well, we've got... Okay. Wow, really? The sun armor is... Well, it's corruption shell, never mind. That would be why it's 10 points down in defense. But you notice all of his other stats go up. I'm curious to see how much it goes up. Let's see. His attack is 498. I think everything maybe goes up by 1. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So that'll bring his defense down, but it's definitely better overall. Alright. So then, that leaves a corruption shell, which we can give to nobody but Freodor. So let's see if he can equip something else. Okay, so then you've got obviously the Sun Gloves. And the Sun Boots, which are a marked step up. That's nice. So now his stats are starting to assume a bit of a better pale when it comes to that sort of thing. This will get better as we continue to discover Sun stuff. Because there's, I think, one or two other Sun items that we need to pick up while we're in here. Alright, anyway. So, let's head... Let's see. I believe it tells me to head east, so let's make sure. Okay, yeah, it says head east, so let's go over this way. And pick up the Sun Helmet! Oh, speaking of... Alright, so, let's go ahead and equip that on the Prince, too. Make sure... Okay, yeah. Alright, so Sun Helmet... Obviously, is gonna go on top of the Dragon Scale there. Let's see if that's... Okay, that's not really equipable on any of his party. Just in case anybody's curious, because I think that was actually the first battle we'd had with the prince's group. A Dory Me Elf at level 45 hits for about, or hits a terror armor for about 20 HP, so not much, really. And we've got ourselves... Yeah, we're gonna keep this up um, because I don't think... I don't remember if I got a Nemesis fight on camera, but I'm gonna keep it up anyway. Uh, this guy's really tough. This party's gonna have a hard time handling him. Uh, yeah, I want to keep in control of Belkut. Lance, our Dragon Horse, is okay. Uh, he doesn't hit that hard, though. Alright, Zarase, I'm going to have you kind of unleash the Star Rune because we need it against this guy. Not fully, because I want to keep some of it for the boss that you're going to be fighting, but still, problems. Yeah, I want to use at least one of the level 4s on each of my major party members because of that. Yeah, this guy can hit like a truck. So just be careful against him. Hit with everything you've got. Otherwise, trouble. Also, that to some degree is the power of the Sun Rune, because it said 1200 plus damage, I think, and it hit for 1356. Well, power of the Sun Armor, I should say. Okay, so that got him a decent bit down, but still not the best in the world, certainly. I don't remember how much HP this guy has, but he's got a lot, so be prepared to come duke it out for a while. Okay, let's 
Go ahead and use the level threes. Uh, don't worry me off, you got plenty of work to do to be a halfway, even remotely semi-decent party member. <laughs> Of course, that being said, to some degree, I am also kind of bringing Fossil Law along for the challenge of it, just because I feel like it. And we do kind of want to get the All Races Party in play here, if we can. Okay, good. There he goes. So probably about four or five thousand dan or four or five thousand HP overall. But you notice you get the Windspun Armor, a Lightning Ring. And an unknown large statue, which turns out to be the Dragon God statue. Now, if I remember correctly, you can only put that large statue in one or two places at HQ. You can definitely put it in the hall right close to the Prince's room. But if you want to appraise it and sell it, if you have Halith in your party, that sucker sells for 440,000 potch. So, yeah, it's really nice to sell or to have in your castle, either way. Alright, so, head over, and now that we've crossed this weird bridge, go north for a switch! Alright, so once we get to the elevator down here, that will take us east. Then I believe we have a switch to hit. And we've also got this door that just opened up. Alright, so, as we venture across this, we see, just in case we might have missed any previous treasures, we see them sitting there taunting us. Another thing I will mention to help allay the game's insanely high encounter rate as we hit a switch here, once you get the Prince equipped with that sun armor and start getting him prepped up as far as skills and everything, his stats become really good. I mean, you might have noticed as I was switching the equipment on him, but just to kind of pop the Prince's stats up here. 500 plus attack, 300 plus magic, about 300 defense, and 200 magic defense. That puts him in really good company. Okay, it puts him about in the company of Fossil Law in terms of defense, but that obviously magic and attack are much higher. It also puts him, I mean, it puts him pretty well in the ranks of your galleons as far as being stalwarts is concerned. And he's got better defense, better magic defense than Belcoot, and better magic than Belcoot, so it puts the Prince in pretty good territory. Maybe not super duper territory, but pretty darn good, ultimately. He can hold his own now. Alright, so let's see. Once we get down here, go over here again. Well, as I was saying, that encounter rate, though. Alright, we pick up the Fantasy Half Coat, which, well, the Half Coat hopefully is fully helpful. That would be nice. Alright, so Fancy Half Coat, 72 Defense plus 20 Evasion. That would be nice, actually, for Zarase. She kind of needs the Physical Defense. So I'll go ahead and give that to her. And hopefully that Star Row will be good for maybe Vicky or Jean. Once we get that taken care of, we head up north here, and we come to another dead end. And a battle. Doggone it, you. Okay, now I'm pretty convinced the game is just trolling me because I was right about to switch to the next party, and yeah, not so much. Okay, it's worth noting that once you get to this point, you are going to be coming up on all those boss battles. So before you go into them, it's a good idea to do healing. So I'm going to do just that. Let's see. Uh, how are we looking as far as everybody else? Okay, everybody else is a little... A little messed up a bit, but not enough where I really feel like I should be using Mega Medicines. So I think we're alright on that sense. Now the first group that's going to be able to go fight a boss battle is Leon's, so go ahead and check theirs. Looks like you guys are fairly good to go, although I could stand to use... Well, I could have probably used that in, or the uh, regular potion on Erda, but oh well, instead of you. Alright, so as we move forward... You... Okay, good. That is the boss fight. I'm sitting here going, you've got to be kidding me. Alright, so it's boss time against Goethe Blulu. Funny sounding name, but he's really powerful and uses a lot of column attacks. So, I probably should have spread my formation out a little bit just to make it less susceptible to that sort of thing. Okay, but anyway, once we get everything set up here, I think we should be decent. Alright, so let me go ahead and we're going to go ahead and use Vermilion Sky. 
Unfortunately, we can't use the creation attack because we don't have the Prince and Leon in the same party. All right, shield. Yeah, let's go ahead and see if we can fury everybody. Gene, I'm going to unleash your level four furious blow. Then go for it, Gundy. And Erda, your great hawk rune is not all that useful, so I'm just gonna have you attack. So you notice he's got a pretty decent amount of defense. This guy's gonna be a little tough to take down. Oh well, at least it didn't hit nobody again. I mean, Miyaki psyched up is pretty good. I would have rather it hit all three of them in the front, really, but oh well, such is life, I guess. Okay, so you notice big AoE attack there. Fortunately, Jean was able to dodge it, but unfortunately, both of the Queen's Knights in the party are out. At least for now, anyway. That could be a little problematic when it comes to if we need any healing. I don't think it should be right now, because you notice, I mean, it might have done some damage, but it didn't do terribly much damage, honestly, so I think we're all right for the moment. Let's go ahead and have the rest of our party continue on, though. Just, there you go. Good job, Richard. See if we can take this guy down. The mini boss has got about, as I mentioned, about 5,000 HP, so that's not the best thing in the world, but it's not the worst either. Okay, Richard, you attack. Leon, I think we need you healing now. Yeah, there we go. That'd be a good time to heal. Mikis, go for it. You're still furied. Uh, Gene, continue on with the furious blow, and I guess everybody else just kind of stick to the pattern. Okay, that didn't do as much damage as I hoped it would, but oh well. Little surprise there's such a discrepancy in damage between Richard and Leon. Okay, there's your column attack. We haven't actually seen it yet. Unfortunately, though, you notice, of course, it came after we'd healed Jean, so it's not as super effective as I would have liked it to be in the long run. The healing, I mean. But still... We're still doing pretty well for ourselves, I think. We'll have him down relatively shortly. Not if our party members just do one hit, though. Okay, so we're going to need to heal Gene in a minute. There you go. Good job, Gundy. Okay, let's see. Okay, this would be the best one because we just need to heal Gene right now. And that should go in, I think, before the Gerda Blue Blue was able to do much of anything. Let's see, yeah, let's continue on this path here. And we should, I think, be pretty good. Oh, yeah, there you go. With that weird-looking dismantlement, we win! And we get an Immoral Medicine, which we definitely can use for the final battle, and the Tachibana Greaves, which we'll see who can equip that in just a second. So you notice, of course, that opens up the boss battle for Zweig, which we'll get to momentarily. But first off, those new gloves. The Tachibana Greaves. Oh, good God, their footwear. Greaves, silly. Okay, so you notice, good on attack, or excuse me, good on physical defense, up your attack and evasion. I'm going to see if these can be equipped on another party before I go into the final battle. Now you notice we cannot switch party members now. The icon is not up because all that we can really do is go north and then head into the main building. And once we go into this walkway or this entrance here to the east, that's it for Leon's group. And I guess one thing I didn't realize until that battle, Billy and I's apparently have the fire rune or the rage rune because one of them used the level three rage rune against us. Alright, so once we head in the door, no more Leon's party. It automatically switches. Alright, so next up is Zweig's, and we've already made sure that Zweig's party is good to go. So let's go ahead and head north and hit this boss battle. Alright, so boss time against Gudalim. Now, this guy is a lot faster than Gerda Blulu. 
So definitely don't take him lightly at all. He's a little bit less brute force exactly, but he still hits hard, so we're going to prepare accordingly. And that of course means my main physical attackers are going to keep on going. I'm going to unleash Vicky with her final flames, Swag, and obviously Mo Rune, although no rocking music for this battle, unfortunately. Now this is one battle where your power mages might not be quite so effective because yeah, uh, this guy's got a little bit of magic defense, so that's unfortunate in a way. But all the same, Vicky will still be able to hit pretty hard, especially if she starts chain magicking, which would be nice. Okay, so that level 4 attack was supposed to hit for 1300, it hit for about half of that, so yeah, again, just FYI. But I'm going to keep using it because, yeah, I, I want to, and it's the best attack for her. Hey, there you go. Dual hitting there, Maroon. Okay, unfortunately, it looks like Isabel's not doing very well mitigating the damage of those row attack type things. Now, this guy has column attacks also, so you want to watch out for those as well. Okay, so Isabel fortunately is a durable little girl. Well, woman, I should say. But we're going to need to watch her health after a little bit. Let's see... Yeah, let's go ahead and extinguish Final Flame here. Might as well. There you go. Good job, Hazuki. Okay, there's more of a... There you go. Good job, Vicky. That's what I was looking for. I was going to say, I'm not really sure what to call the tail swing move. I guess you could call it a dual row attack, so to speak. But yeah, we'll definitely need to heal Isabel if this doesn't take him down. And I, I don't think it will. I don't think we've done quite enough damage yet. It's kind of too bad, though. I think this would probably have been a better battle if I'd had more of an avoidance tank. Say, Richard or... I mean, Galleon just kind of swallows everything up. But if we'd had, I think, Richard in place, this might have been a little bit of a better battle. But that's alright, though. Alright, so let's see. Go ahead and keep attacking with you. Let's see, who of us has healing items? Okay, you've got a medicine. You've got carp soup, which I could go ahead and actually use that on her. Okay, Vicky, not the blinking room, please. Let's see if your explosion can do anything. Let's see, Zweig. Okay, you've got eye drops, so it wouldn't have been a good idea to use your items anyway. Uh, you've got medicine, so that wouldn't have helped out a whole lot with healing either. There we go. Use those manufactured food items to good effect. And he's dead anyway. Good job, Isabel. Alright, so from that, we get another Immortal Medicine and a Wind Ring, which I think we already had a Wind Ring, so well, maybe I'm thinking of some of the other Wind Gear. But still, decent prizes. Not super great, but still pretty decent. And of course, once we're done with that boss battle, it opens up the final path for the Prince. Alright, so, let's see, that wind ring, let's take a look at it real quick. Okay, wind attack plus one, yeah, nothing I'm particularly enthused about, really. It's too bad, though. Once we get done with that, though, head north and... Just head north again. <laughs> Not really much to it. And once we're done with that, that's it for Zweig. Lastly, of course, we have the Prince, and we've already checked on stuff. Uh, the party's fairly good to go, I think. So let's go ahead and head north. And we fight the final boss battle in this run against Enmashara. Enmashara has some pretty serious AoE attacks that can stun, so... If you have any healers in this party, you will want to have them on task, which primarily is going to be the Prince. Now, Zarase, I'm going to go ahead and start unleashing her Star Rune on everybody because this could get really problematic if we don't do that. Okay, let's see. What is Shield? Okay, Shield doesn't have level 4. Alright. Let's see. What do I want to do? I think I want to do Battle Oath and see if I can Fury Belkut and Galleon or maybe Lance. 
That'd be nice if I could get all my physical fighters psyched up. Okay. Really, Belcoot? I just psyched you up. Come on, man. Oh, boy. This might be the toughest of the boss fights we've got, just because of what we have up against us here. Okay, yeah. See, this one's also got some pretty serious magic defense. Alright, so Belcoot and my Dory Me Elf are both in trouble. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, they're both stunned, at least. Alright, so... Go ahead, Zarase, and start unleashing Comet. Then, Prince, I want you... Let's see... Hmm. Uh, let's go ahead and do Crimson Sky, I guess. For now, at least. I want to be careful as far as health is concerned in a minute. Mostly for Zarase. I might have to actually revive her in a minute, but... The rest of them are alright for the moment. Okay, so if Zarase's common attack hit for something like 600, this is probably going to hit for about 8 or 900, I would expect. 850, okay, so close enough. Also, ouch, Belkoot. Alright, um, I think I actually want to be preemptive with the Prince's Heal. Because that Restore that he has is not just for reviving. It's for getting people back up to speed, too. So, I want to go ahead and have him... Okay, yeah, let's have him use it on Belkut so that Belkut does not die. Because Belkut dying would be a very bad thing. That would leave some rather exposed front row... Well, front rowness going on here, and we don't want that, definitely. Okay, good. Yeah, so that gets him back up into play here. Might have to use another one on Zarase, depending on what this stupid thing does this turn. Okay, so you're just gonna... There you go! That's what I'm talking about, Belku. You show him. Alright, so we're good to attack now. <laughs> Alright, so Zarase, you just keep doing your business. And my useless Dory Me Elf be a little less useless. And actually the Prince can attack now too, because we don't really need to heal anybody. By the way, great job on that crit of four! Good job, Dory Me Elf. That's why I brought you along, because you're going to save the world. God, wouldn't it be hilarious if I fight the final battle with that thing and it ends up getting the last blow? I mean, I might... If that were to actually happen, I think I might... I might have to cut like ten minutes out of the final video just because I'll be doubled over laughing and probably bashing my head up against the desk, to be perfectly honest. Oh my goodness, wouldn't that be something? Okay, uh, I think we're still good to attack, honestly. And it looks like this thing's on his last legs of sorts, I suppose. Zarase might actually take it out. Uh, or not. Nah, hey, what can I say? I was hoping. Okay, so that's more of what I thought I would see from this guy. Alright, so Zarase's almost dead. Yeah, this is bad news. Let's not have that happen, please. So, Prince, let's go ahead and have you do another preemptive Light of Day. Just to keep the worst from ensuing, and it should get in on time, I would think. Unless we kill it first. Okay, yeah, there we go, good. I was hoping we'd kill it first, honestly, but oh well, that's alright. Zarase still needs to be healed up anyway. Ah, alright, fine. Hit Belcoot, see if I care. Well, I do care, but... Not if I can kill you first. Okay, just in case, though... Let's go ahead and have Light of Day on Belcoot, because he's starting to get a little down on his luck, and I'd rather not risk it. Although, it's not gonna matter. Our good Enmeshara is dead! And we get another Immortal Medicine and a Water Ring, which is about as useful as the Wind Ring, so yay. Once that's over with... Well... We're just about done here. Because... Well, we probably got one more battle in us, I think, before we reach the point of no return here. Or not. 
Okay, so, it's worth noting, once you go into that door there, and you meet up with the rest of the parties, it is the point of no return. So, be aware if you need to do any grinding, if you need to get any equipment or items, if you need to do anything in regards to getting ready for this dungeon, you need to do it now. Because if you don't, that's it, you're done. If you, I will note, that if you do leave this dungeon, you will be back with your original party with which you went through the Ashtwall Mountains, and I believe they are fully healed once you go back in. And if you go back into the dungeon, I think it fully heals your parties as you go in to explore, so... That's an interesting little quirk, and I rather like that, actually. So you get a little bit of leeway to do that. But this is the point of no return. If you cross this threshold, you are committed to ending the game. And that is what we are going to do next time on Suikoden 5. So, thank you guys for joining me, and I'll see y'all later. <laughs>